So today I'm going to give you a full ship tour of Coral Princess, which you can see behind me, deck by deck, starting from the bottom and working our way to the top. So without further ado, get comfortable and let's get on board. Okay, so before we get started on our full tour, a little bit about the ship itself. Now, Coral is the oldest princess ship that I've cruised on and was launched with her inaugural cruise back in 2003. In terms of size, she's a pretty big ship actually, so she is as long as the Eiffel Tower is high and features a total of 15 decks. Now, as we go through, you will see that there is a deck 16 on the ship and the reason for that, if you've never cruised before, is that the majority of cruise ships that I've been on actually don't have a deck 13 because it's considered to be a pretty unlucky number generally so you tend to not find that number at sea. Now just before we get started, if you find this video useful and if you enjoy it, I'd really really appreciate if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. I'm hoping to use this channel to help as many people as possible find their ideal cruise ship and their ideal cruise line because it goes without saying not every cruise line is for everyone. Now the tour today we are going to kick off on deck 5 and make our way to the top and we're going to look at every public deck. Now the reason why we're not going below deck 5 is because deck 4 is just the medical centre and everything below deck 4 is crew only. So without further ado, let's get started up on deck 5 of Coral Princess. Okay, so where we're going to kick off our tour today is in the main atrium of the ship. Now, the atrium on here spans across decks 5, 6 and 7, so it's a sort of triple vaulted setup that you can see at the moment. Now, a lot of people that I've spoken to before have referred to atriums on ships generally as the heart of the ship. And you know, when I think back to Coral Princess, I would completely agree with that. Throughout this tour, we're going to repeatedly refer back to this atrium and generally this was like the hub of activity all day. Now the first thing to look at in this atrium section, so down on deck 5 is guest services. Now you'll need to go here if you need to ask any questions about anything on board or maybe to get booked into speciality restaurants or if you've got any problems when you're on the ship. Now directly opposite guest services you'll find the Captain's Circle loyalty desk. Now Captain's Circle is essentially Princess Cruises loyalty program so every night that you cruise with them, you'll build up points and that unlocks certain benefits. So you'll find the desk here for any questions. Now at the other side of guest services, you'll find the shore excursions desk. So if, like me unfortunately, you forget to book your excursions before you get on the ship, you can do that down here. And then on the other corner of the atrium, you'll find future cruise sales. So if you're on the ship, you're looking to cash in on some decent, well usually quite decent offers for booking a future cruise, you can do that down on deck 5. Now next up on this deck is the Good Spirits at Sea Bar. Now if you're new to Princess or if you have cruised on the ships before but you've never tried this bar out, I would massively recommend it. Now, the way that this works is usually the drinks in here, or the majority of drinks here, are included in a beverage package. However, they will run an hour a day, or two hours a day, where it essentially operates as like a cocktail show. Now, when those events are on, you can still get all of the normal drinks, but you can also order speciality cocktails, essentially, that are usually themed with a place. Now, the TVs that you can see around the room, when someone orders one of those drinks, these TVs will activate and they'll play a story about the drink that you've ordered. They'll then flip to a camera and you can live watch the bartender behind the bar making your drink. So really, really engaging and I'd really recommend it. And the final venue that we're going to look at on Deck 5 is the Bordeaux Dining Room. Now, I'm actually only going to show you one main dining room on this ship because they're so similar that in the interest of time, I've decided to cut the other one out but you've got Bordeaux on this floor and you've got Provence on the floor upstairs which we're not going to look at the detail of. But as you can see when you come in it's pretty standard to what you would expect from a main dining room on any ship. 
Now, the reason why I wanted to give you a bit of a walk around in here is that you can really appreciate the scale of this dining room. I found this to be the case on Regal Princess as well, where the main dining rooms felt enormous, whereas on new, the brand new ships like Discovery Princess, which I was on earlier this year, the main dining rooms feel a little bit more separated off. So in our case, we were in the main dining room on Discovery, but we were in a sort of subroom with five or six tables. So that's not the case on here, so it's it's a big, big setup. Now moving up a deck, up to deck number six, you will find that we're going to begin at the shops of Princess. Now you guessed it, we're back in the main atrium. So the shops on here essentially wrap around the main atrium section. You've got on this side the branded shop, so everything in here is branded Princess Cruises, which I think they have probably thought about absolutely everything that you would ever want to buy. The other side is where you'll find like your cosmetics and your branded perfumes and whatnot. Now we're just going to skip over here past that other dining room and then I'll leave you to have a look at the other shop on the other side. So the next area that we're going to look at today is called Ocean Front, and you'll find this further along on deck 6. Now, as you know, Princess's ships are now all medallion technology equipped. Now what that means is that you essentially wear a tracker device that you can use to unlock your door, you can use it to order food, the crew can use it to find you at any given time, and this area of the ship is where you can come to purchase wearables so if for example you'd like to purchase a wrist strap or you'd like to purchase a necklace that you can put your medallion in any way that you can customize your medallion you can do that here now that is directly beside the casino now i actually can't offer any first-hand advice from the casino because i am a useless and b <laughs> don't really know too much about how the casino works so if you've got any advice that you'd leave for anyone in the casino then maybe feel free to leave a comment because I cannot offer anything on this front. Okay, so coming out of the casino, the next thing that you'll find is the Photoshop and gallery. So if you've had professional photos taken on board and you'd like to order them, you can do that here. You can also buy camera equipment here. So you can see a display case there for GoPro. You can also buy tripods, you can buy binoculars, you can buy loads of different tech if you'd like to do that while on board. Now, next up, actually a bit of praise from me for Princess. Now the Explorer's Lounge is the next venue that we're going to look at, but first of all, look at all the seating that's available all the way along this corridor. One thing that was absolutely fantastic about this ship is there is so many options for just finding somewhere to sit down. So yeah, absolutely brilliant. Now the lounge itself probably demonstrates why these venues on Coral are among my favourites that I've seen on ships. And I mean, look at the size of this venue. This is absolutely huge. I've been on so many ships in the last year that when I walk into a venue at 9pm, 10pm, I really, really struggle to find somewhere to sit without awkwardly sitting at someone else's table with them. However, in this venue, it is so well compensated with chairs that, you know, you're never going to find yourself short of a seat in here. So really, really good. Okay, next up. Now, the Universe Lounge is actually my number one venue 
that I have seen on a cruise ship so far. Now, that's a, bo <laughs> that's a very bold claim. However, this lounge is excellent. I quite often find this part of the ship is a venue which cruise lines don't really know what to do with because it's not the theatre, it's not a main show lounge, it's just sort of kicking about at the end of the ship. However, in here they have transformed it into essentially a double story show bar and these stages at the front, so they've got three huge fully revolving stages here. It is such an impressive venue and every night that we saw they had something on in here, the place was absolutely packed. Now, you'll find that this venue does spread across two decks, as we said. So the entrance that we went in a second ago was down on deck six. And that takes us to the next deck on our tour, which is going up to deck number seven. So the types of events that they had on in this lounge when we were on board, they had karaoke, which for anyone who was doing karaoke, it must have been very daunting in a room this impressive. But they also did like daytime lectures and stuff in here as well. But generally speaking, a fantastic venue. And yeah, I really, really hope to see more venues like this on ships going forward. Okay, so now we're moving to look at speciality dining that's available on Coral Princess. Now up first is the Bayou Cafe and Steakhouse, which is essentially an American grill that is on deck seven of the ship. Now before we go in, you'll see on the left hand side here, more seating options. So just harking back to what I said earlier, if you're looking for somewhere on this ship to sit with a beer, sit with a glass of wine and chill out, you are not going to struggle at all. Now, moving into the restaurant, the theming on this ship, I found it to be particularly impressive. I actually found it to be far better themed and far more effectively themed than the newer Princess ships, which are much more kind of, they feel much more like mega ships. But on here, when you go into a venue, it's very, very clear what venue you're in and it's completely different to anywhere else on board. Now, we did eat in here and really, really enjoyed our meal. It is an additional cost, but you simply pay the cover fee and that covers you for all the food that you would want to eat that night. Now, next up is probably Princess's signature or most famous venue on board, and that is the Sabatini's Italian. Now, I have eaten in Sabatini's across two different ships. I actually didn't eat in this one, purely due to the fact that I ran out of time. I was only on for a short cruise. But you can see in here, again, going back to my earlier point on theming, on this ship, the theming is absolutely immaculate. They have thought of every little detail and every single section feels so, so unique. The really interesting thing is this is just through the wall from Bayou and it's just down the same corridor. So it's really, really impressive how they can pull off such strong themes when you're literally directly next door to the previous room. So yeah, really, really well done and would really recommend Sabatini's if you're planning to dine in a speciality. Now next up, you've got the art gallery. Now in here, you'll find a couple of events as you get on the ship. They might have a guess the weight of the painting. They might have a guess what year this was painted and you can go along and win some art or you can head along and buy some art. Now, having never bought art on a cruise ship, I can't actually offer much advice here other than the fact that it seems to be something that's pretty popular on board. So hey, if it's new to you, why not pop along and have a look? Okay, now the next venue that you'll find as you head along deck seven is the Wedding Chapel. Now, obviously Princess's association with the Love Boat makes weddings on board a pretty common occurrence and from what I've seen they actually seem to be executed really really nicely. Now this room itself is where your ceremony would obviously take place and outside the windows on the right hand side is the main promenade deck. So on this ship there's a prom deck that you can walk all the way around the ship. However if you are getting married in here at the time I believe that they rope that off so that the general public aren't going to be walking past the window 
and you and your guests will be looking straight out at the ocean. Now, when I was on board, there was a wedding in here. They then chose to have dinner in the Bayou Cafe and Steakhouse, so I'm not sure if you could have this area privately for dinner. All I can say is that that wedding didn't. Now, further along Deck 7, you've got, again, a very famous venue for a princess ship, and that is Crooner's Bar. Now, in here, this was probably one of my favourite places to go before dinner for a drink. They've usually got someone on the piano. It's really, really chilled. If you're like me and you enjoy people watching, then you're going to think you've died and gone to heaven in here because you are back in the main atrium. So, yeah, it's a really busy thoroughfare and perfect if you want to just chill out with a beer or a glass of wine. Now the next venue that we're going to look at is the Churchill Lounge on Deck 7. Now in here, this is where you'll be able to go to smoke cigars or cigarettes if you're cruising in a part of the world that allows onboard smoking. Now that's a really key part of that sentence because if you decide to go in here in a part of the world that doesn't allow onboard smoking, then yeah, you could get into a bit of trouble. So <laughs> always just make sure that that's an option when you're on your cruise but really nice room and you'll see in this next clip the wood in here is absolutely beautiful now the wood all the way through this ship i think gives it a really traditional really really nice finish okay and coming out of there the next venue on deck seven is the wheelhouse bar now this is actually where the majority of onboard events that would be held in a bar were so, for example, the Solo Traveller meetup on night one was in here. Um, other events that fall in here, you had like an online blogger meetup, the LGBT meetup was in here, and um, there was loads of different events that took place in this bar. Now, again, going back to my point from earlier, look at the size of this lounge. This is absolutely huge, and I never turned up at any point in here to find that I couldn't get a seat. Now, one thing that you will see coming on the screen now, actually, but it will come on slightly clearer in a second, is that this bar has got a huge dance floor in it. So, recently on quite a few ships that I've been on, there's been some unhappy passengers about the fact there's not really anywhere to dance. However, in here, this is absolutely crying out for it. So, do not worry if you like to dance and you struggle to find space on a ship. Now, at the very front of the ship on Deck 7, you'll find the Princess Theatre. Now, this is where all of the large-scale production shows will take place while you're on board. Now, other events that they will have in here, they'll also have the onboard lectures. They sometimes have onboard movies which take place in here, which is a perfect venue if it's a little bit, you know, the weather's not ideal on the top deck during the day. Now, you'll see when we go in here that this theatre is absolutely monstrous. Again, venue size, very, very impressive given the size of ship. Now, one thing I would say, despite the fact, you know, I'm saying this is absolutely huge, the majority of the time I'd go in here for a show, if you weren't in, and 20 minutes before the start of the show, you would find it was already full. So, the big bit of advice from me is that if you're cruising on Coral in the future, just make sure that you go a little bit earlier during those really peak times. Now, you will notice that we're currently going down, and you actually go down the height of an entire deck, so the bottom of this theatre is on deck number 6. However, there's not an entrance down here, which I actually did find that quite unusual and quite rare. You can usually come in from the bottom or from the top, but it's worth noting that on here you always come in from deck 7 and walk down, and that's also the case if you're a wheelchair user because the only wheelchair viewpoints are located right at the back. They are in a really nice private section, but they are right at the back. So just always make sure you enter the theatre from Deck 7.
Now, on deck eight, there's only three venues that I'm actually going to show you on here, and that's because the rest of the deck is taken up almost entirely by passenger cabins. However, the first venue that I'm going to show you is the Internet Cafe. Now, this is probably a venue that I think is on the way out on cruise ships, really. The majority of people go on board now with their own devices, and I never ever see anyone using the internet cafes. But hey, that aside, this one's pretty well equipped, you know, plenty of computers, plenty of space. There's also a printer in here if you needed to use it. So yeah, absolutely not an issue if you need to get online and do a little bit of work. Now moving over to here, the opposite of work, if you want to chill out and play cards, then you can do that in this room. This is probably one of the most obvious examples of this ship being a really traditional cruise ship. It's actually the first time I've seen a card room on a ship and I love it. The amount of times you'd go by and this would be full of people just playing cards, it was yeah, absolutely brilliant to see. Now directly beside the card room is again one of my favourite venues on this ship. Now this is the onboard library. And the way this is done, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's maybe the wood, I think it's maybe the lights, but this library is just absolutely beautiful. It's so comfortable as well. So if you want to come in here, lose yourself in a book, sit in a really comfy armchair where you can stretch out, this is where to do it. Now, I filmed this at night, so the blinds are all down and unfortunately you can't get a true feel for what you'd be looking at if you're sitting in here. But when you go in here during the day, because you're above the promenade deck and you're above everything else, you're just looking out directly onto the ocean. So it's such a beautiful place to just chill out and relax for a few hours on a sea day. Or as well, you know, if you're in port and you don't want to get off, the library will be open as well so you can come and do it at any time of day. Okay, now decks 9, 10 and 11 are made up entirely of passenger cabins, so we're not going to be looking at them in this tour. However, if you'd like to see some cabins from this ship, please head over and check out my channel and I've got loads of room tours on there for you to have a look at. However, one thing that I would like to just mention about the decks that have got all passenger cabins on them is that you'll find each one will have a laundromat or an ironing room on board where you can go and do your washing, do your drying and get your ironing done. Now this to me is a real asset on a cruise ship. I really dislike when you travel on to a ship and you've got nowhere to just sort your clothes out when you get on board and also nowhere to get them sorted before you go off. So really big win and because you'll find them on every floor you usually find the machines are available. Moving up to deck 12 is where you'll find the sanctuary pool but also all the kids club areas. Now for obvious reasons I chose to not try and go in the kids club to film, not even at night because it just, it seems a little bit off at times to be doing that on a ship. So unfortunately you won't get any content showing you the kids club in this video. And due to that we'll head up to deck 14 which is the Lido deck and we'll head out to the back of the ship to talk about the sanctuary. Now, the sanctuary on this ship is the private, adults only, pay as you go area essentially. So you pay a fee to come in here. You can pay for half a day, you can pay for a day. Now, on this ship, the sanctuary is spread across three different levels. So you've got deck 12, which is down by the pool, deck 14, which is what we're looking at here. Remember, there's no 13. And then deck 15, which is above here, but we'll come back to that shortly once we've covered the rest of deck 14. Now moving in from the back of the ship, you'll find the fitness centre. Now on board Coral Princess, the fitness centre is split really clearly in two. Now the room that we're looking at initially is one of those halves and that's essentially where all of your seminars take place, it's where all of your classes take place. So if for example you are coming along to Zumba or you're coming along to Spin, then that sort of thing would all take place in here. 
What I'll take you through and show you next, but I probably won't do a voiceover on it, is the other side of the gym, which is your cardio and also your weights area. So as you move forward on this ship, the next venue that you'll find is the Lotus Spa. Now, one of the key features of the Lotus Spa is this beauty salon that you're looking at at the moment. So if you'd like to get a beauty treatment done, if you'd like to get your hair done, whether you're a man or a woman, you can get all of that done in here. Now one of the other main features of the spa is the thermal suite. And this is an area which I usually love to spend time in a thermal suite on a ship especially if I'm cruising somewhere with colder weather. Now, this is probably one of the smallest ones that I've ever seen. The room that we're in at the moment, this is it. There isn't another room that connects to here, so really, really small and really, really intimate. Now, despite the fact it's a small area, they've actually managed to squeeze quite a lot in here. Now, you've got a number of saunas and a number of steam rooms, all of which are very clearly labelled on the outside to show you what it is and how long you should be spending in it. They've also got all different types of showers, so you can have fog showers, you can have power showers, you can have coloured showers, like they, they are actually really nice. The only call out that I would give, if you, like me, like a thermal suite, is that you're not getting any ocean views from this one because it's entirely on the inside of the ship. So if that kind of thing bothers you, then yeah, you, you might actually feel a little bit claustrophobic in here. However, it doesn't bother me at all and this was a really, really nice space to spend a few hours while on board. Now again, moving forward, after you come out of the spa, the next thing that you'll find is what they call the Lotus Pool. Now this, in a nutshell, is the indoor pool on Coral Princess which also features an ice cream bar and it also features a regular bar, which I'll walk you through in a sec. Now moving back to the rear of this area, you'll find the ice cream bar. So the ice cream in here does cost extra. My top tip though is always just, if you're looking for dessert and you don't want to pay any extra, just shoot along to the buffet. You're pretty close from here that you can nip along there and then come back. If you're happy to pay more, then the ice cream here is actually really good. So yeah, dig in. So what we'll now do is we'll walk the length of this pool area and then we'll finish off by looking at the bar up at the far end. Now, it's a real plus point for me when a cruise ship has got an indoor pool. I usually don't actually swim in it. It's just the luxury of having somewhere that you can spend a bit of time, especially on colder weather itineraries, or just days when it's quite windy and you can't sit outside. Somewhere to spend a bit of time that's not just your room, you know? Now, the bar section here has got your normal bar on the right-hand side, and on the left, it's actually got a really nice area to chill out in which is almost like a gazebo with the water that flows into it. So yeah, really, really nice touch. Like 
Now the final area that we're going to look at here before we move outside actually takes us up a deck. So this is class as deck 15 and it's called the conservatory. Now in a nutshell the conservatory is just the upper floor to the indoor pool and it's usually a lot quieter due to the fact that there isn't any direct pool access so most families for example will be more likely to spend time chilling out downstairs. Now up here you can also play table tennis which you'll find on this side of the room and also on the other. And on those colder days at sea you'll also find more loungers up here so yeah if you come up and you think you've probably left it too late to get a lounger, try up here and there's probably a decent chance you'll at least get one or two available. So now moving out to one of my favourite areas on any cruise ship and that's the Lidl pool deck. Now, I absolutely love to sun worship and I hate when you're in really exposed wind on a cruise ship. So, the setup of the pool here is actually pretty good, how it's got the wraparound decks on top, which really gets rid of a lot of the wind as you're trying to sunbathe here. Now, in here you'll find a combination. You've got your main pool area, you've also got your hot tubs that you typically find on cruise ships as well. So, what I found was that the pool here was actually a decent size and you never really found it to be too busy so yeah seems pretty well compensated and at the back of the pool area you've got your bar and your princess pizzeria now it's worth mentioning that if you're used to the newer ships you'll be used to um gg's pizzeria for example on this ship it's an open air poolside pizza bar now moving to the very front of the ship you'll find the horizon buffet now in here before you go in, you always have to wash your hands. Now these hand washing stations are great. I saw these added to the likes of Virtuosa post pandemic. I didn't actually cruise with Princess before Covid, so I suspect that they might be an addition that has been added on as a result of the pandemic. But yeah, really, really good. Now moving in here, you can see that this area of the ship has obviously been upgraded most recently. It's so modern, so clean. And there's so many different serving stations in here. It really, really surprised me when I'd walk in here at mealtimes and they managed to fill everything. Now, it's worth noting that this is replicated on the other side, so you're only actually seeing half right now. And then you've got this section down at the very front of the ship, which is essentially, during the day, treated as like your onboard cafe. So if you're looking for coffee and a cake, then you'll come down to this section which is where you'll be able to get that, rather than getting full hot meals as you walk down either side. Now this here is just showing you what the other side looks like, so exactly the same as the image that you've just seen us walk through on the other side of the ship. Now generally speaking, I know that we're looking at the ship and not the actual service or anything, but one point I would mention is that the buffet on Coral Princess was absolutely fantastic. The quality that you're seeing here, this was, to be fair, this presentation was maintained throughout dinner service, so yeah, really, really good. Now the penultimate deck for us to look at today is deck 15 and we're going to begin up there by looking at the top floor of the sanctuary. Now we've already covered the two floors below which is deck 14 and deck 12 but you can see on this level here it's just more spaces to chill out so you've got those comfier loungers, you've got the gazebos that you can hire privately and all the little sections up here are significantly more private than the main pool. Now deck 15, the way I'm going to show you this is by giving you a bit of a very quick walk around the deck. So deck 15 wraps the entire way around the ship. So if we really quickly go down this end here, you'll see that we now come out on the main pool side. So on the right hand side, we're now looking down onto deck 14, which is the main pool deck that I showed you a second ago. Now up here at the moment looks pretty bare 
I mean, it probably doesn't look it at the moment in this video, but the wind on the day this was filmed was insane. So, <laughs> for that reason, all the furniture was taken away, but usually you would find this full of loungers the entire way down. Now, we'll put it on fast forward again, and I'll take you down the very front of the ship. Again, you can see all the loungers, so you would imagine that on a busy sea day, you'd be able to sunbathe all up here. And at the front of the ship, now the glass that you're seeing on the right hand side is actually the front of the buffet. So if you remember where I told you about coffee and a cake before, the windows there look up onto this front curve. And this is amazing for when you're docking in port, or if you're in port, you get some really fantastic views here looking right over the front of the ship. Now it's worth mentioning, the little staircases here will drop you down into the buffet. The only negative is that if you then need to wash your hands, you have to walk all the way to the front, back to the hand washing stations that I showed you earlier. Now just fast forwarding back down to the main poolside, and that is a full wrap round of deck 15. Now I won't walk you all the way down the side of the funnels, I'll probably cut in a sec, just because you're just going to see exactly what you saw on the other side. Now the final thing to show you on deck 15 is the bar and grill area. So you'll find up here, you can grab a burger, you can also grab a beer, and you can chill out overlooking the main pool. Okay, so the final deck that we're going to look at is deck 16, or the sports deck on board. Now the first venue that we're going to look at is what they refer to as center court. So up here, you'll find your basketball court. They can also play like mini football and stuff up here. Usually you'll find this area is really, really busy with kids if you're on a sailing, particularly where there's a school holiday. So it was a long weekend that I was on for. There was loads of children, so during the day, it'd be really difficult to spend much time up here. Now, following on from the basketball court, you've then got your deck games. So you've got shuffleboard, you've got chess, You've got multiple things that you can play up here. And one of the big benefits to this section of the ship is that view off the back. Now I heard a lot of people say on here that if you weren't a sanctuary guest, you unfortunately couldn't see the back of the ship and that couldn't be more wrong. So maybe this is a top tip that you need to think about. Just always head up here if you're looking for those amazing sunsets on coral. Now the final bit to show you is the splash pool. Now this is at the total other end of the ship so we're now back at the very front above the buffet and this is essentially another small kind of plunge pool with way more opportunities for sun loungers as well. And that's it, that is a full ship tour of Coral Princess. Now if you've enjoyed this video, please think about subscribing to the channel and also give the video a thumbs up, that would be fantastic. But for now, hey look, if you're planning to cruise on Coral soon, have a fantastic time and let me know how you got on. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks. Bye.